If gardening is your passion, digging in the soil is your pleasure, and growing your own food is your mission, we've got a lot in common. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, including yours truly, with The Gardener magazine. Filled with the latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas and tips. Available from leading retailers or online at thegardener.co.za. From cover to cover, it's gardening at its best. The Gardner Masterclass is proudly brought to you by Stark Airs, the foremost African commercial and home gardening specialist of globally sold premium seed and innovative gardening solutions, growing together for a sustainable future. And the Gardner and Detainee magazines. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas and tips. Well, good morning, everybody. It's a Thursday morning. It's 11 o'clock on the dot. And welcome to a Gardener Masterclass. Today is a really cool topic. So, you know, there are... Oh, I don't, we all have this problem. Listen, as, as gardeners, we all have this problem. Because there's never a there's just never enough space. No matter how big your garden is, no matter how small your garden is. I get the small part because you're kind of limited, but you get to a point in every garden where there is no more horizontal gardening that can take place. It's now about going up. But going up is not only from a space perspective, i.e. the physical space that's available, but it's also a really important design principle. And I, that word design principle could be quite scary to you, but I don't want you to get overwhelmed about it. Um, I'm gonna go into that a little bit more in detail so that we can really give you some practical examples of how to incorporate that into your garden. Um, but most importantly, what I want to elaborate on is that it is so much fun because your creativity can be let loose and it's easy stuff guys this does not require big builds concrete how's your father that 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 no 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 this is like saturday afternoon in it goes in time for the rugby the rugby's finished now um they nailed they killed them killed them in the cricket that one point nearly shot my nerves finished finished but anyway guys here we are um, and um, it really is a delight to, to be with you all this morning. But first of all, let's see um, who's online. Um, and let's say hello to everybody. Gosh, I was in Port Elizabeth um, last weekend on Saturday. Man, and it was like, it, it was like the, the, it rained. Well, first of all, the aeroplane like fell out the sky dish, when we came to land. And uh, it started raining and it rained the whole night. And the next morning, just before we were about to start, the sun came out and it was beautiful, beautiful. So I know that everybody's had some good rain, which is just fantastic. Joburg has just experienced a few days of rain, which means it's sunny time and time for the weekend, which is just good. Morning, Andrea. Morning. I saw you on last Saturday. Morning, Wins. Um, Susan Govender, good morning. Uh, Vinishri, um, good day everyone. Um, Renata, welcome from a sunny and warm PE. It's my best day of the week, sitting at the office and watching your show. Renata, you must have a very nice boss. Oh, unless my, my window is minimized in the left-hand corner, disguised by the pot plant with one leaf hanging over the screen. Um, but either way, you're doing it. Good on you. Nice to see you here with us this morning. Daphne from Joburg. We have had lovely sunshine, 
but sure will love the rain. Oh, absolutely, with Monday and Tuesday this week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And guys, I hope you're all following The Gardener and Friends, which is our brand new TV program, which is on the home channel, channel 176. And it's got myself and a few other of um, my gang. And um, yeah, it's on every week. Uh, Don't ask me when it's on. You need to just go to menu, scroll down, 176, and then right arrow. And you go, 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 and then you press record or remind. Um, But it really is on quite a few times, so please do look out for it. Because besides what we're sharing with you today, in that program, it is packed. And I mean packed, full of really good gardening content, um, we hope to think, and inspiration. Um, Oh, I'm being shown a sign that says... The new episode starts Tuesday at 9 p.m. That's if you're awake, 9 p.m. But after Tuesday, it goes on and on and on and on, and it's repeated 17 times. So, guys, no excuse for you not to watch it. Okay. All right. Anyway, that's just FYI on the side. Uh, Margie, good morning from George. Oh, George, George, George. Yeah, I want to go back there. Um, Glynis, good morning from Sea Point. Um, yeah, guys, uh, uh, Martin, um, I missed you this year in Bloomies. Oh, come on, man, that yeah, that was lovely. That was, and guys, this week, Saturday, um, we are at Builders Warehouse Zambezi. Um, so please, if you haven't booked your spot, please get hold of them. Um, Builders Warehouse Zambezi. And yeah, we, uh, we're looking forward to it. We really, really are looking forward to it. Um, Lenita, good morning to everyone from Morningside PE. Um, uh, what? <laughs> Sorry, I missed your visit. Uh, fuchsia face tongue out. Is that the emoji? I don't know, I don't know what that is, but I'm, I hope I'm getting it right. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I've had a bit of the lurgy, so it's um it's still hanging around, um like like a bad um. Uh, no, we won't go there. Okay, um, Silet, good morning from Clarkstop. Good morning, good morning. Um, Silet, you're asking when when will we see you at Builders, guys? Please, all I, all you've got to do is please just keep an eye out on my Facebook page, uh, Tanya Fisser, the gardener. Detainee, and of course on the Builders um, Facebook pages as well. So if you keep an eye out on that, it tells you where I'm going to be and what I'm going to be doing. All right. So yeah, that's the one to follow. Terry Lee, good morning, sunshine. Good morning, good morning. Um, I hope you are good. I hope you are good. Steph Green, good morning. Uh, Robin Brooks, very warm Cape Town. Jeez, I believe you guys have had temperatures like that make um, weeds curl. Um, I, I mean, I heard the other day, I think yesterday or the day before, it was like 32, 34. Your summer is here, but your dams are full. Hallelujah. Oh. Okay. Um, all right, guys, let's get into it. Um, anyone else who's just joined, let's see. Oh, Charlene, good morning from a warm poll. Um, and uh, 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 Mabel. Um, I love your program on TV. Keep them all coming. Always watch when I need advice. Mm, excellent. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. Um, all right, guys. We're talking vertical. And, you know, when this whole vertical gardening trend started. <laughs> and I'm talking, I'm probably going to take us all back about 10, 12 years ago. Because... It really became like a thing, hey? Because when they started with um, wanting to green cities, um, which is really, really important, um, because it, it, by having the green walls, you reduce the temperature, you take away all that awful heat from the concrete. But then, of course, from there, it 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 morphed itself, and through osmosis, ended up into us gardeners, that we wanted to have vertical walls and, and, and. Well, 
that's when things went pear-shaped. Because I tell you, there are a few things. So a, a few of the vertical kind of systems that came out were modular. Um, they had an intricate water system that would go up the one side through a drip irrigation, which would then flow down through into a collection pond, which needed its pH tested and its this and its temperature and its oxygen levels and that, that, that. It just was almost, it was a wall to entry for me. It was like I could not be bothered with going to that drama, um, really, because time, all those things, um, and investment. So a lot of people tried that, the vertical wall, plus, 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 here's the other thing. People tried to put plants that are this big in a sucky that you buy from your local garden center into a hole this big. Okay, something has got to give. Something's got to give. And so there was a lot of learning as well in what worked and what didn't work. And thank goodness we are now a whole lot of years down the road and we have learned many, many lessons. And probably the lesson that I can share with you the most is that do it in the most simplest practical form that you can without complicating your life and make sure that it works for you and that this term vertical gardening by having an entire wall or something planted up with whatever I think is a for me because it's still a bit like out there and I, I wouldn't go there it, it's just a me thing by all means guys go ahead go and go and give it a bash and I'd love to get feedback. I really, really would. But sure, it's just like, a, it, it's a thing. It's a thing. And it's just my personal opinion. Um, but why do we garden vertically? Besides the fact that now we've run out of space. And of course, when we visit any garden center, the, the plants jump onto our trolleys. We don't even pick them up. They just jump on. We end up having to pay for them. We get home and we have no idea where we're going to put them. Ta-da! <laughs> True story. So yes, we end up having to find more space. So the space issue is one. But essentially, it's planting up a wall. It's using the vertical spaces that are there or the negative spaces that are there. So, so what is a negative space? So let's pretend patio, lawn, garden bed, fibercrete wall, okay, here's your patio, I'm going to just, just go through it again, patio, lawn, typical garden, garden beds, fibercrete wall, the spaces that we can use are the fibercrete wall, number one, that is what like springs to mind, number one, the negative spaces is that in between, is that in between part or just in the garden bed, to create the heart that we want. And why do we want the heart? We want the heart to draw our attention to. We want it to create beautiful focal points. We want it to give the illusion of space. Because when your eye has to move from there, up there, from there, down there, it's like when you, when you come across a really good looking person. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. Okay, so we want that to happen in the garden. We want, it must be a, it's like a stop, stop and watch and pay attention. But there are so many ways that we can do that. And that's what I think in, in, from my side is, is really what we can achieve by these little tweaks that we can make in our garden. The other thing that vertical space brings to you and the use of vertical in any garden is it brings that beautiful symmetry that brings gardening together and a space together called repetition. Repetition. And probably the example that you can all picture in your heads is a garden bed with five standard iceberg roses planted in it and underneath it some flowers. That is vertical gardening, guys. That is going up. If you took those icebergs away, boom, you're on one level. 
plain, simple. Soon as you start adding in those 90 degrees, those areas of different textures, and using the negative space, man, we're in it. We are in it. Okay. So don't be scared. Move your cheese. If you can't, get somebody else to move it for you. And do it. And just do it. Okay. So now that you've got the idea, let's get into what are the options on a really, really practical basis. Now, should I should I should I make everybody everybody's mouth water first? I think let's do that. So we've prepared uh, it, 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 a visual slideshow for you guys so that you can see these things that I'm trying to explain because sometimes, yeah, you know, sometimes it's difficult. I, you know, I get it. Sometimes it's hard to, it's like giving directions. I, you know, um, so, um, what I really want to do is, is just show you if I can open this thing, uh, how, if I can find it. No, I haven't even got the PowerPoint up yet. Um, yeah, this is interesting. Oh my goodness, I'm sending things to the queue. Why is it not opening? <laughs> you know, so bear with me, but you know I'm really bad at this, guys. Oh, maybe I'm pushing the wrong button. Oh, caramba. Huh? I'm looking at the bottom and I'm pushing the button. You know, now they're all shouting at me and giving me instructions, but they're actually trying to whisper the instructions. Um, Megan, I think you better just come here and make this thing work. You see, guys, I'm very, very bad at this. You know, because I'm using a Microsoft. I'm not using apples. You see, I like apples because it's a fruit or a veg. It's a fruit, right? You see? Oh, thank God. Praise the Lord, child. Okay. Daughters come to the rescue. Hallelujah. Amen. Right, here we go. Are you ready and buckled up? Guys, this is what we call vertical options. Now, probably one of the plants which I'm going to, to share with you um, and show you some other tricks that we can do with it. This guy on the right, probably the most famous, which is Trachlospermum jasminoides, called the star jasmine. Now, the beauty about this plant is that it can use, be used as a ground cover, like literally flat on the ground it grows. You can also take this plant and you can hedge it. So you can trim it into a hedge. Um, it's beautiful. And of course, it grows in the sun or in the shade. And in the poorest of most revolting soils, it grows. Okay. But even better, it loves growing vertically up trellises. And in fact, right now, wherever you drive, any garden that you go and visit, anywhere in town, you will smell it before you see it. The fragrance just hits you, vodka, and then you end up like having to look for the plant. Like, where are you? Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? And I think that is a beautiful element that can be added to a plant. Um, it really is adding that next sensory level, which we must not neglect. On the left here, and this is beautiful contrast, I love the blue wall. Guys, get out a tin of paint, go and buy one litre, um, and paint, paint a wall. Be brave. Uh, put a wall, put a colour on with some texture, with, um, yeah, with a, with a, with a coarse texture, like a fired earth. Um, gosh, they've got some beautiful textures. Be brave. Be brave. And, and that really is a message. The contrast of the trellis against this and this plant that is growing up here, simply beautiful. I'm going to show a bit more uh, of that later and share it with you. But this is a Diplodenia, also known as Mandevillea Sanders eye. Um, most of us know it, know it as the Diplodenia. And you get it in white, you get it in pink, you get it in a pale pink. And you get a yellow, but the yellow is a bit shy to flower. Um, a little, little bit shy to flower. Okay, now here are some like traditional, um, these are, these are iconic. They are like the Dame Edna's of comedy. Uh, but these are iconic to gardening. The one on our right is Clematis. Now Clematis, guys, you cannot grow on the coast. You cannot grow 
in very humid conditions, they don't like it. Uh, a great climber, flowers, late winter, early spring, sometimes even into summer, and you even get an indigenous variety, which is a smaller white flowered, a, a beautiful plant, gentle, soft, so it won't like pull the whole trellis down, you know. Um, on our left is of course iconic um, climbing roses. And you know, if you've got a slight mental block against roses like I do, um, climbing roses are robust. They built, they built for this. It's like a Hilux is built for like work. The climbing roses, there are a few that are incredibly tough. Crepuscule, the climbing iceberg, your banksia are all really no-nonsense climbing roses, uh, which always do the job. This I love. Come on. I love this. Look at what a fibercrete wall all of a sudden looks like. It stepped out of a, a 12th century um, English mansion. Eh? And it's a common fibercrete wall. Beautiful. Really easy. Um, over here, and what's important about this here, whatever you're using, you can use a twine, guys, but I just want to, I want to show you something because very often people use, just use um, um, wire. But what happens is the wire overheats. The wire gets really, really hot, obviously, if it's on a sun-facing wall. So what I suggest that you use is, if I can find it, um, uh, ma, 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 uh, uh, you can use this, this, which is, um, take a look at it. It's like this nylon, nylon rope that you can, you can buy by the meter, um, at your local hardware store. That works and then you can stretch it, okay? You can use that or you can use, but I'm going to say to you, try not use this because this is not a good permanent solution. You can use this plastic coated wire, um, but this really is, mm -mm. I'm gonna say go with this. And the other thing that really, really works, and I hope I have a piece in my box of tricks here, um, but I don't, is shade netting um, string. The shade netting, is that the right word? Uh, twine, shade netting twine. So when you go to, your hardware store and the shade netting department, you will find a roll of um, plastic shade netting. It's black and you can use that because you can pull it and it does not heat up. So the plants can quite happily attach to it. Um, guys, but this is beautiful. Just, just spectacular. This is, this is hot guys, this is hot. What have we got here? We've got a kind of industrial look, um, a hot, north facing wall perfect plant selection succulents popped in we've got geometry we've got repetition we've got symmetry we've got textural being played on each other and we are using the negative space which is there just for a bit of breathing room and it and it it works it works so in here are some sedums Okay, that's a beautiful golden sedum. Um, we've got the donkey's tail over here. Um, this looks like a da -da -da -da, lampranthus, one of the common fakies. So, so guys, it, it works. And these things really, they, they're really very tough to kill. Um, this is an idea that we have used so, hot, so often in our garden. And... It literally is some boxes uh, that you've either smacked together yourself or you get some recycled timber, create some boxes and they are very easy. Look here, do you see that thing there? Do you see that thing there and that thing there? You don't need any brackets or any angle iron or anything expensive like that, it is literally putting a box together with some screws and a few pieces of timber. And that is beautiful. It works. And it is so, so simple. And it creates such 
an awesome effect. I mean, it's pleasing to the eye. Here, ooh, for display purposes. So this is called bragging rights. If you have a bonsai collection, if you have an adenium collection, if you are, have a succulent collection, indoor plants, whatever it is, think about this as a method of vertical gardening, as a method of display. Nice and simple, really nice and simple. So here, pieces of timber put into the wood, um, put into the wall. How do you do that? Okay, that's quite easy. You get something called thread bar, okay? You get something called thread bar, so it's like a long piece of whatever, metal, and it's got some threads in it that you could actually put a, um, there's one around the corner there, um, Megs, on my, on my workbench. Uh, so you get a piece of thread bar, you drill a hole into the, the concrete. <laughs> drill a hole in there, you get that beautiful stuff, which is called, um, it's on that side, it's on that side, that corner, there we go, it's coming. Um, so thread bar, I love it. Okay. Ah, thank you. This our thread bar. Guys, so this is it. You can see what it looks like. And you, you, can, you can cut it into pieces by using a hacksaw. Um, if you've got a, one of those bolt cutters, does the job. But what you do is you're going to drill a hole into your wall. You then, then get that beautiful stuff called, um, uh, where you add the one part to the other, epoxy. You mix it together, you coat it, and you go, and you put it in, and you're leaving some sticking out. Okay? Then all you do is you take your piece of wood that you've got, say this is my piece of timber, and you mark it. Very easy, mark it. And how do you get it in the right place? Quick tip, take a cokey. Put some cokey on the end and then put that there so it leaves a mark on the piece of wood or piece of chalk. Drill it in, put your epoxy on, squeeze it in, Bob's your uncle, you're good to go. Okay, very, very, very simple. And of course, one of the traditional methods here, which I do like the glass, but guys, the glass, unless it is safety glass, sure, I get a bit nervous, hey? Um, but yes. What I do like is the light will come through and the plants will still be incredibly happy. And then on something completely from slick to really practical, two liter plastic bottles are come no. We've all got that because lots of clippies and coke has been consumed in the last while. So we've all got lots of two liter Um Diet Coke with the clippies. I, I, I don't get that, by the way. <laughs> okay, glad with the clippies. <laughs> You're just more sick, Okay, so anyway, let's get back to these. Um, uh, guys, these can be attached by either um, using um, string that goes through them with tying a knot, and I'll explain that a little bit later. You can also simply just drill them in with a few washers. There are many, many ways, but this garden is very happy. It's very happy and you have created a container a container and all you need to remember is you've got to drill a few holes at the bottom the lower end which is over here you've got to drill a few holes and drill the holes guys don't take a knife and poke it because when you take a knife and poke it you make a big gash which will then carry on splitting all right so so very important but we have made these they so much fun um, and, and really just, just easy. Okay, now, um, the, the step ladder on the right hand side. Guys, I, I cannot tell you, and this is a true story. Um, I have picked up, I have picked up so many broken step ladders at our local dump. <laughs> yes, I promise you. You know when the step ladder is like really broken, busted, finished, whatever, people just throw them away. I go along there, throwing out what I need to throw out, while well, I come back with a bucky load of other stuff. True story. I'm like a womble. Okay. And, um, but step ladders, step ladders, whether it's only got this front part, you just put it against a wall. Okay. And then you've got these, which work perfectly for a type of vertical gardening. 
perfectly, guys. Um, it, I, I think it's just so simple, so easy. The other way that you can do it is you can take two step ladders, so one here and one over there, okay, facing outwards. Then you run a plank across here. Ha, <laughs> yes, you're with me. So you're running a piece of shelving across here. So you've got shelving plus you've got the other steps that you can also use. Nice and easy. Go to your local dump this weekend. Guarantee you that you'll find a, um, a step ladder or two. The one on the left is just too cute and simple and it really does fill a, um, a space and with interest most of all. Baskets. Oh, guys, we're going to go more into detail about baskets. But this is probably one of the easiest ways of creating vertical impact. And what I do love about baskets is that they are ever-changing. That you ring on the seasons, you bring in your favorite colors, um, you change them as and when you feel. And I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that later. But here also, uh, we've shown you many examples of this. And, and if you've followed any of our DIYs, you'll see a little enamel bucket with a couple of holes drilled in the bottom, does the job. Um, folks, this is of big interest to me, this here. I really, really like this. And this is so simple. If you look here, and basically all they have done, all they have done, and I'm going to show you over here, if I have a pot with a hole, which I do, um, all they've done is really, really simply, very, very simply, and of course there are very little pots here, but never mind that, is you are taking it along like that. This is not the greatest thing to use, but you are going to go there. You are going to tie this knot here. So let me just, I'm going to do a, the wrong knot, but I'm just going to show you to give you the idea. Um, give me more, give me more, give me more. Let's do this. No, wait now. I'm, look, you see, I'm getting too many things. Too many things. Okay, hang tight. Hang tight. Stay on the line, caller. I am back. Um, is take this over here. So let's do this with a long piece of string. Okay. And all you've got to do is feed it in. This is so much fun. And you don't need to be a rocket scientist to do this. You really don't, but all it is, is feeding it through. There we go. Ding, ding, ding. Feed it through. Get to your lowest part. Make a really big knot. And sometimes if you're not confident on the knot, I get you. Because I'm not. I only know how to make granny knots. Um, if you're not confident on this knot, what you can always do is just pop in um, a, a little nail or something in there that you can then tighten up. Okay because there you have the one and you get the idea and there you go with the next one make the knot oh come on through you come and then here we do it like this and it is so so much fun and you can create from small to really really big impact um, pots so we can go there but um and then we can go over here. And this is truly fun. Think about this in repetition. That's what I like to think about. Think about it in repetition, like four of these hanging on, on a wall, on a bland wall, like, like your courtyard or something like that. Um, and of course, with the appropriate size pots and the right plants, well, really, um, you couldn't ask for much more. Now, there's always one that is badly behaved, isn't there? So let's just do this, and it really is nice. The important part about all of this is what works for you. And, and I, I'm going to say this over and over again, because it is about your time management and how much time you are prepared to spend in the garden. But from an ideas perspective, ah, oh, come, mummy, look, I just made that one a bit too short, so it looks like it's really meeting its friend, but it really should be up there. Of course, if you've got more time and you're not under the clock like I am right now, you would get this right. Look, it's quite cute. And you could hang a few things in. Very inappropriate pot size, but you're getting the idea. Okay, so that works. 
Okay, now I've got much more to get to, so I'm going to scream through these last few slides. This, guys, is insanely epic. It's large. It's, um, it requires like almost what I call a big build. Um, but these are huge arches which have a window box that is attached and hanging. And then you get this cloud effect. Boom, 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 boom. Ah, oh, man. It's just beautiful. But yeah, that's, that's next level. This is so cute. In fact, I took these pictures at a B&B &B in Bloemfontein where they had simply taken pots, tied them, and they weren't even lights actually, and just tied them upside down to a structure. You could do this under a tree. You could do this from anything. Put a plank across something and tie them. They had a structure which they used. So simple and yet so effective. So guys, that is what we call those are some of the ideas on, on how you can get it right. Okay, so now let's go into the practical uses, all right? So come along with me here and, and I want to just go through some of the examples of what we can use in, in our homes to make it nice and simple, you know, and in our garden. So let's talk about this over here. Um, I really like these. Um, a bit of an investment because the galvanized ones and I would urge you to rather go for the galvanized like this one is uh, because it's going to last a long time. But these with a buxus, with a, a jasmine in it, with a eugenia could get simply put over the plant. And then as the plant grows, so it starts hitting these edges, really easy to maintain. You put the clippers on and you've got vertical. You leave this in there. You don't take it off and move it around now because this is part of the design. Uh, but very nice, and especially for repetition. I really like these. Okay, when it comes to trellis, guys, your options are endless. And, and it might sound really silly, but there's something that I do want to show you. You know trellis has a back and a front. And I have made this rookie mistake quite a few times. The back shows where the nail gun went in. <laughs> And do you know that feeling when you have attached it to the wall and you've put in the hilti and it is secure and you stand back and look at it and say, Hi, Kerniels. Near mama. Okay, okay. So, these are the front, huh? Okay, over here. Now, consider what you are using it for. If you're wanting this, if you're wanting something to create vertical with a pot, on a plinth possibly, and a plant. This would be a good option with the fine, okay, because these are more expensive, obviously, because we are using more wood. If, however, you are looking for something that you want something to climb on, okay, don't go and waste your money unnecessarily. Rather go for something with a broader gap like this. And I'm going to tell you why as well. Because with the broader gap, there is more airflow. There's more space for the plant to actually naturally grow and will grow much happier. And most importantly, guys, this is where the tribal starts, is when you attach it to the wall. When you attach it to the wall, guys, please, you must leave a space, and I'm going to hold it like this. So imagine this is the wall over here. Here's my wall. You must leave a space between the trellis and the wall. Okay, how do you do that? Well, it's very easy. With a spacer, which is a little piece of block, an offcut of timber that you first put onto the wall, and then you attach the trellis to it. So why are we doing that? Well, we're doing that for a whole lot of reasons. Number one is airflow, all right? Airflow is important for plants. Number two, heat. If this is smack against a hot north-facing wall, your, it needs sun cream, factor 50, okay? It, 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 it gets hot and then the plants suffer. Okay, the plants do suffer. Um, so that's trellising, guys, and I'm going to get to this in a second. Right, that guy I'm going to use just now. Baskets. We spoke about baskets and... There are, baskets have come a long way, hallelujah. Um, 
they're not only those wire things. And there are various ones which can be used over and over again to create the height, the style of whatever you're looking for. Um, and once again, here you just, just do it. Just go wild. Just do it. From creating heart, I came across this little gadget at a hardware store. Man, and I just think it's so no no. Okay, um, so it comes with these three things, and it's actually sold as a tomato tomato cage. Okay, um, as a tomato cage, but I can see it for sweet peas. I can see it for green beans. I can definitely see it for tomatoes, but like I'm quite keen to to try this guy out. And it comes with these three things. It comes with all these little gadgets that you just um, can just unclip. And guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you that it comes with little things like this, okay? And you know why they are there? So that when you do pack it away, you put all of these things onto here so that you don't lose these things. Okay, because I can see what's going to happen. You will take this thing apart, okay, and you will lose one of these. I know you will. Yeah, I know you will. But anyway, this is a very cool thing. I love it. And it's going to be going into the veggie garden after this live. And I really can't wait. And also the thing is that when the tomato's gone to heaven, finished doing its job, you can pack it away and away you go. Okay, next type of vertical, if trellis is a bit out of the... Um, out of the budget, then these are fantastic. We use these all over in the garden. You can see this one is old. It's been used so many times. It's actually got a bit of soil still here because it comes out for sweet pea season. Um, it gets put away. It comes out when I'm trying to stop the dogs from going into a garden bed. Um, and yeah many 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 different options so these little concertina guys <coughs> excuse me work incredibly well okay um i want to take us across to the side over here um and then i'm going to touch on some hanging baskets guys various other ways which you can purchase if you don't want to put up your own shelves which are pretty instant is and you're going to find so many different shelving options like this what I love is that the people have been smart enough to think about small homes. So, narrow shelf, look at this. One, two, three, that I can fit. One, two, three, four. Four things on it. And all it needed was, look up here. Let's take Roger away. Look, one screw, second screw is at the back here. That is it, guys. You know, you're not having to take a degree in in DIY. It, it, it's simple, it works, um, you can change the color, you can do whatever you want. This shelf over here is another example. Guys, two shelves, very simple, really nice to work with. Um, and these are from Fusion Home. Uh, you can um, have a look on their website. Guys, there are so many options and I love it. I love this stuff. Um, what I love is the, uh, the metal here. Do you see this metal? so that when you are watering, yep, when you're watering, it will go through and it will go into this plant and we're also saving water. But quick, easy, and you know what, if you get bored, ha, huh, if you get bored, vip it out. Just take it away, take it away. Okay, um, there are some questions, so let's go to have a look at what your questions are, guys. Uh, Renata, what plants will survive and tires attached to a wall and especially morning sun. Ah, you've got lots of options. Um, Renato, so it's morning sun and, and tires. Just make sure that your tires have got holes in them, okay? Drainage holes, enough. Enough drainage holes. For me, if you, there, there are two options you can go with here now. One you can go with permanent and the other one you can go with annuals. Annuals, if it's getting morning sun, your little uh, calibracoas, which are your trailing petunias, beautiful, stunning, stunning. Any of your fahi family, so fahis, portulaca, lampranthus, ala fundi, clean fit blankies, but platus, they will do well in there. Um, thinking out loud, jasmine, 
the little jas the jasmine that I spoke about earlier, the star jasmine, will love it there. Um, of course, you can go for more permanent options, which is this. Um, but before I get on to that, let's actually just talk about hanging baskets very quickly. Because this is a sticking point that so many people, this is where I say it goes pear-shaped. Okay, guys, come and have a look at this basket over here. So, Mace, you're going to have to come around and, and have a look here. Now, folks, this is a, a really nice size basket. And, and this is very important when you're considering what you want to plant inside it. The bigger it is, the more it can tolerate heat without you having to intervene. In other words, giving it lots and lots of water. So many times I've seen people buy these impractical little baskets about this big, as big as a saucer, and vrachtig, I don't know what you're going to put in there. Your spare change. Um, but a plant to survive in that amount of space requires quite a bit of attention. And I think that's where we fail. I, I honestly believe that's where we fail because we don't give it the right nutrition. It doesn't have enough space. Um, and we put the plant under incredible stress. So I always rather go with a slightly bigger basket. And this basket is filled with perennials. Okay, the only annual in here is this little gypsophila at the back here. But in the center, I've got a lovely geranium. I have got um, some sutura, which is also now known as bacopa. We have got the, the um, diachondra here, which is called silver falls. Oh, it's beautiful. And look how the silver just picks up. Trailing. Really, really gorgeous. Just lovely. And a kind of furry. And remember, anything that's gray is tough. It's tough, it's tough, it's tough. So, and what we've done with the repetition is we've repeated this three times. So it appears once here, once again on that side of the basket, and once again on that side. But as a general rule, guys, for your preparation, and this is your preparation which excludes succulents, okay? It excludes succulents because it's the preparation of these small pots or whatever we're putting up on a wall or it's any kind of thing that we're attaching that we need to get it right. This is where I need you to do the following. And I am not saying this because it is a, it, it, it's a product that we can use. I'm saying this because we use this all the time. That basket was planted with the recipe I'm about to share with you. Um, and it's there's one thing that can make such a big change, especially if you are doing something like this. Um, Mason, just have a look up here. Look at this. Three little terracotta pots. So easy, guys. Drill a hole, zhik, straight into the trellis. Okay, but it's, it's, it's limited. It's small, all right? So, if you don't know the stuff, this is the stuff you need to add, guys. This is the stuff that has changed so many people's gardening to gardeners as they are to turn them from average gardeners into hero gardeners and i say that with all due respect why because when they plant they are now super successful um this stuff here is called hydro cash and uh, you can see there's some like black dust that's coming up off here that's because that is the carbon guys it's a little container it's not a lot a hundred grams it's a hundred grams because you only need so li so little. You only need a little bit. I mean, if I read the instructions here, it is, huh, it's like a teaspoon into five liters of soil. Okay, so the, it's a little bit. So there are two ways you do it. You either apply it dry, so dry as in like this, you sprinkle it onto your potting soil that you're preparing for your pot, for your hanging basket, for your container. You apply it dry and mix it in, okay, to your mixture. Add it, of course, with your organic pellets, whatever else you're using for nutrition. So you mix it in so that when you water, this is what happens. When you water, love this. 
I just love it. Anybody need it to pee pee? You now really need to pee pee. <laughs> so, um, and you saw, I probably put in like an equivalent of like three teaspoons into here, guys. This is hydro cash. You really don't need a lot. Um, but so you either apply it dry, okay, which is you sprinkle it into the, um, into your, uh, over your potting soil or whatever your mixture is. And I'm going to tell you to add one more thing, one more thing. But do you see what's happening? Look at the consistency. And I call it slush puppy. Um, you all remember the slush puppies as kids. Some of you still probably drink them, like me. So we can actually add a bit more water here because I want to show you how, what it does. It's, it, 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 the properties of this product are insane. Plus, very, very importantly, this stuff is not toxic. It is non-toxic. You could drink it, you could feed it, you could eat it, you could swallow it, you could sniff it. It is non-toxic. It is biodegradable. So after three months, you do need to add more. Um, which you can add in various different ways by making a hole into the soil and throwing a little bit in and then covering it up. But look what it's done. It's still sucking up water, guys. So you apply it dry, okay? Or you do it this, when you are planting. You take a handful, throw it in the bottom of the hole, literally. Put it at the bottom of the hole. Now, I could add a whole lot more water to this, um, and you're going to see it's, look, look at that. I mean, come on, guys. It just like, it just, it takes more and more and more. So it's taking up the water, and when the plant needs the water, it takes it back. I mean, it's like the solution of the gods. There, taking up the water. Right, so option two. You take your plant, if you're planting in a hole, in a garden where it's dry, hot, dry, take your plant, take the bag off it, and you put the plant, if this was my plant, I'm gonna use my water bottle, you put this at the bottom of the hole and you go just like that. So its root zone is sitting in this well-drained, yet okay, happy for the root zone. When the plant needs the water, sucks it all up, gets going, when you water, these things swell up again, and away you go. Right. There's one more thing that we add to our mixture, which is of our dry potting soil. So imagine we've got our potting soil. All right. Okay. Um, so I am just looking over here. Right. So we've got our potting soil. Finally, potting soil, what are you going to add to it? Hydro cash, sprinkle dry, okay? Like one teaspoon, not a lot, guys. Then you are going to add the following. And this is where game changing actually really comes into its own. And that is your best gardening buddy, your best gardening buddy, a block of palm peat, guys. This is my palm peat. You put this block into this Tupperware, add water, and it turns into this beautiful stuff. Now, what I want to show you is when I do this, I want to show you, and I pour water. Hmm, where's the water going? A little bit of seeping up my hands. But it sucked up most of the water. And when I do this, there it is. So we have Hydra Cash holds the water. We have Palm Peat, which also holds the water. Great for aeration. Perfect for a meaning and adding to your amazing potting soil. Guys, so what proportions do you add that into? If you've got a five litre bucket of potting soil, I would add at least five handfuls. Five litre bucket, remember this is easy to remember, five litre bucket, five handfuls of your palm peat that has been broken down, all right, like this. And when you've used what you use, you just close the lid up again and you put it away, ready for your next container. Nice and easy. Okay, do this please guys, and I, I'm, I'm asking, please do this because it makes such a difference. It honestly makes such a difference. Okay. Um, 
I want to get onto this over here. Come along here, please. Um, I need to move this out the way, but I have to get to it. Um, the, but the, this trailer seems to be following me around. Um, guys, another lovely way of incorporating vertical into your garden is a simple thing just like this, which is air plants. So it's a, it's a, it's a timber frame uh, used with some, some weld mesh. I mean, it's a piece of, of fencing, for goodness sake. And all we've done is use some hooks, which you can pick up at your local hardware store. Look at that, these little S hooks. Pop it in the back of the pot here and hook it on. And from bromeliads to air plants to stag horns to old man's beard, there is going vertical. And when you get bored of it, you take it away. Simple. Okay. Really, really simple. One of the best ways and one of the important things, remember I was talking to you about nutrition, is because we are dealing with a lot of the times small containers, plants that are suspended, you know, like, okay. We've prepared and I've shown you how to prepare the right soil and the right mix. The next thing I want to show you is about that essential feeding, which is very, very, very important. Um, folks, and I, I, can't, I can't stress it to you more, but remember, the pots of herb that are suspended up there, the air plants, your succulents, cannot send their roots out to the neighbor to go and find something. So I would honestly really work with a liquid um, fertilizer, which you apply as you are watering. So this here, this is 10 grams. This is 10 grams in five liters of water, guys. It is affordable and it goes a long, long way, full of all the right nutrition. You would do this once every 10 days. So almost as um, every second week, I would say, as you're watering. That's what we normally do. And it's just this plopped into your five liter watering can. It's gonna give you all the nutrition that the plants need. And then to pimp it and to give it, you know when you're feeling down, like you know, you've been around someone with flu or whatever, sometimes you go and get a vitamin B shot. Okay, or you take just a little upper or something, whatever it is. Any plant in our garden that has a sniff, a sniffle, is not looking happy, is being disagreeable, gets a good dose of seaweed, of kelp. Okay, this kelp over here, give it a shake. It's full of cytokinins, it's full of auxins, it's full of amino acids. Guys, measure it out, you can't use too much. Throw it into your watering can, mix it with your nutri feed, and use it. I promise you, this is good green juice. Um, I'm sure that some people wish that they could even drink it. Because uh, seriously, it gives you a good, it gives the plants that extra kick that you need. Okay, right. Next up, I want to show you this, guys. Um, and this is a common mistake that, that happens when we have bought a climber and here, oh, Sure, it's heady, hey? Yo, it's so beautiful. A jasmine climber, this is how we normally buy them from our, our local garden center. And of course, I understand why they do it like this. It's got a stocky inside it, and it's been tied together with a whole lot of um, what, we call, what we call budding tape, which is this stuff, okay, or wire or whatever. And it holds the plant together because, you know, it keeps it far neater, but this is where we go wrong. We take it home, we put it in a pot, we plant it in the garden because we're wanting it to climb up something. But the guy's still tied up like he's in a straitjacket. Okay, so what we have to do is this. And folks, it does take a bit of patience, but it's well worth it. I want you to unwind the plant. Okay, because just, just unwind it. And you do it gently and you do it slowly. And... You unwind them, here we go, here we go. It's a bit like one of those Rubik's cubes that once you get the hang of it, you get better and better. So here I am unwinding and you will all of a sudden see that we are dealing with a completely different plant. Yes, ah. remove the stick. Oh gosh, they do make this difficult. Remove the stick and now 
I want this thing to go on a trellis. So I take my piece of trellis, right side up, I pop it into the back here. Okay, let's just get a bit of Vuma behind this. Pop it in, there we go. And now comes the part where a lot of us go wrong, guys. So, in your little arsenal, stockings. Perfect, perfect. I love stockings. Well, not really, you know what I mean, for the garden. Um, they work really, really nicely. And because they can stretch, um, they, they disintegrate after a while. And so you take this, you can also use oh, a bit of shade cloth, whatever. But guys, please, this is the important part, that you take these lower, these lower ones and you attach it as horizontally as possible. So I've attached it right at the bottom here. And all I'm going to do is just give it a quick tie. I know that we want it to get higher. I know we want it to grow fast. But what I really want you to do is get it to go sideways. From here, we then tie it there. Okay, do you see what I'm doing? From there, we tie it there. And I bring this guy down as low as possible. Do you see? We're trying to keep these as low as possible because the plant by nature wants to go up. And what we are going to end up with in time, if we leave it like this and don't guard it horizontally, is we are going to end up with a bare naked stem and stuff at the top. Okay, so do that. Do that. Right. That is that. I really wanted to show that to you. Okay, guys, I don't know where the time has gone, but she is gone. She is gone. Folks, um, remember to get out there and find your gardening inspiration, which is jam-packed in our November issue. Can you believe it's November? Where did the year go? In our November issue of The Gardener and Detainee. Man, uh, it, it's a beautiful magazine full of uh, great content in terms of, and I'm going to tell you what, we go through good bugs. Um, we are running our next article on the heroines of horticulture. Very interesting. Some scandal involved there too, but never mind. Uh, we talk about begonias. Um, there's beautiful perennials that you can pop in for color. Three fast-growing shrubs. I mean, it is all in here. Grow to Eat is available right now for you to get the right food in, how to harvest, how to store it, and how to cook with it. And of course, the piece de resistance is Let's Bry and Comons Bry. Guys, yummy, yummy, mouth-watering stuff. So, um... We are grateful, we are thankful, um, and we do hope that you enjoy our magazines. Uh, guys, a huge shout out to Stark Airs and the team. Um, thank you so much for your wonderful support. Um, uh, and the best part about it is, you know, it's like the stuff that I use is the stuff I love. And <coughs> no plant in my garden gets away without the treatment I have just explained. And that gives me great joy in sharing that with you. So, um, from me to you, all that's left to say is take care of you and yours. Don't forget to watch the Gardener TV program. Hopefully I'll see you in Zambezi. If not, um, I'll catch you up on Facebook. Take care of you of yours, and most importantly, happy gardening. The Gardener Masterclass was proudly brought to you by Stark Airs, the foremost African commercial and home gardening specialist of globally sold premium seed and innovative gardening solutions, growing together for a sustainable future. And the Gardener and Detainee magazines. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas and tips. If gardening is your passion, digging in the soil is your pleasure, and growing your own food is your mission, we've got a lot in common. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, including yours truly, with The Gardener magazine. Filled with the latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas and tips. Available from leading retailers or online at thegardener.co.za. From cover to cover, it's gardening at its best.